Well, welcome back to the channel guys. I hope you've been enjoying the content lately and we've got something a little bit different today. Now I'm going to do a live match at the weekend. So I thought rather than just doing it, you know, put the GoPro on the side tray and talking about it afterwards or talking about it through the match, I thought we'd do um, like a pre-match sort of look at tactics, baits and all that kind of stuff that I think might be involved. And also come back to it. I'll show you the footage of the match and obviously show you all the live match footage and then actually come back to it after the match and doing like a review and see and we'll look at the tactics see if the tactics worked whether i could have done things better all that kind of stuff i just thought it'd be quite a nice in-depth way of looking at a live match rather than just the the you know the standard way of doing it so the match i'm fishing is at my local shearsby valley now i'm going to be on the willow lake now i fished three matches on this lake and i won all three now the last time i was on there i actually broke the match record with 232 pound which was an amazing day's fishing caught Obviously, used my clicker. I had 230 odd fish, so an amazing day's fishing. Mostly caught shallow, um, with a few down the edge as well later on. Bigger carp, bigger F ones, that kind of stuff. So, obviously, I'm keen to keep that record going on the lake. You know, I'd love to win again. It's just uh, it really suits me because it's busy fishing. You know, I'm good. I'm quite good at that. When there's a lot of fish to catch, I'm quite good at it. Like I say, it's a bit of a numbers game this lake. So there's two options really. We can fish in the edge or on a very short pole on the bottom looking to catch you know just steady away throughout the session um, but then you've also got shallow fishing which is obviously where the main bulk of what i'm going to be trying to do so let's talk about the shallow fishing first i've got all my rigs laid out that i've got on top kits ready to go i've got my bait that i'm going to take as well so there's been a couple of rule changes as well and we've got to talk about and it's something that i've got to consider now first up bait choice very very simple i've got some meat which is going to be used in the edge you're allowed two tins of meat six mil cube I'd love to be able to feed this all day. I'd love to be able to just trickle meat in, in the edge all day, but you can't with a bait limit. So what I like to do, I'll cube up the two tins and then with two hours to go, I'll start introducing the meat. Um, you just haven't got enough bait to make it go any further than that. And to be honest, I don't really want to fish in the edge until that last sort of two hours anyways. For feed, so I quite like to just use pellets. It's not the biggest of matches, so it's going to be hard to justify buying six or eight pints of casters, which I think you would probably need to, to go down that route. Sorry, the cup's back out in force. I was tempted to smash it up last week after the Brentford result, but we're gonna have to support them. Casemiro's coming, the saviour. So yeah, so I'm gonna just use fishery four mils, got a bag here. How I feed, I won't even use a third of a bag of pellets. So I've got some four mils, just some fishery pellets. Um, I'm also gonna grab a bag of micros in the morning. Um, more about that in a minute. So four mil, they're like a screttings type pellet, um, but that's not the bulk of my feed. The bulk of my feed is slop. Now I love a bit of slop fishing. Um, when there's lots of little F1s, you know, these fish are two to the pound with an odd bigger one. When they're that size, I don't think you can beat slop fishing. It's aggressive, it's attractive to the fish, it pulls fish in from everywhere. I'm going for a bag of meaty salmon. Now you say, one bag? Well, I only feed tiny little blobs. It's not a lot of bait, I'm just flicking it in. Semi regular, you can get you can get carried away with this. I like to make it super wet. I put some haze in it, some of the krill and squid haze, which is like a pink colour. That just exaggerates the cloud a bit more. Only a little bit though. I'm not you know I'm not going to like try and blow you with like you must use this. You don't have to use it, but because I only want to use one bag of ground bait, just a little bit of dye helps it linger that a bit longer. So a bag of that mixed up super wet, but just wet enough so I can throw it in. So we've got a bag of that to go with our meat and our pellets. Now, one thing that I've got to talk about is hook pellets. Now, at the venue, what I like to use are oiled up 4 mil Coppins pellets and oiled up 4 mil Robin Red pellets. The problem is, Dan has introduced some rules now where, apart from expanders, you can still use your expanders, but any pellet that you put on the hook that isn't an expander has to be the fishery feed pellets. So what I've done, I've got myself a little batch of 4 mil fishery pellets, and I've been drizzling the fish oil on it all week. The goal here is to get a pellet that I can leave in the lasso for 30, 40 fish. When I broke the record the other week, literally use the same pellet for an hour at a time. So doing this is so important. You could super glue it on, but I don't really like, I don't really agree with doing that. You know, at the end of the day, you put in super glue in the water. I'd, I'd rather just do this. It's a natural product, the oil, and it just penetrates that pellet, makes them last that little bit longer. So that just gets me around that. I'd like to say I'd love to use a Coppins or a Robin Red, but I can't unfortunately because of the rules. Them's the rules. And then finally, we've got some 4mm Pro Expanders. Oh, paste. Right. 
I'm going to fish paste actually, um, short on the top kit. Now all I've got for that is a bag of the pro paste, the natural one. I'm going to mix that really stiff. You've seen me do that before in the micro paste video. That's exactly how I'm going to fish it. I like to start down the edge on this lake with micros and expanders. The problem is with that, when you're fishing there and, you, and you're trying to concentrate, you're fishing with a little lash. I'll talk, tell you through the rigs in a minute, but you know, you're know, fishing with a little lash. You're trying to concentrate, get your feed really accurate. I find it quite hard to get my slop exactly where I want it and build that swim. So I, want, I like to feed it for a good hour before I go on it. I find it quite tricky if I'm fishing that side or that side, I'm just throwing my slop a little bit willy-nilly. What I'd rather start on is just the top kit in front of me. It might be a bit slower than the edge, but it allows me more to concentrate on feeding that swim in front of me, the, the shallow swim, which is going to be about eight to nine metres out. So I'm going to fish pace on the top kit just in front of me to start with, and I'm going to throw slop in. I will fish that pace for as long as I can. Like I said, the longer I can feed that shallow line, the better it'll be in the long run, because it gets better and better as the day goes on. If you go out and catch the first few fish that are there, no good. You want to build it and build it and build it so that every time that slop hits the water, they're like out the water for it. So that's it. So I've got three spots essentially. I've got my micros and expanders in the edge. I've got my pace short, which I'm just going to literally feed an odd four mil over it. And then I'm going to fit, fish that shallow spot out there. Now, where does the meat come into it, Joe? So the last two hours, what I will do, there's a lot of carp in this lake now. It used to be all F1s. Um, I'll start, I'll sack off the micros and expanders with probably two hours to go and I'll just start loose feeding meat against the reeds. Now what happened last time, the carp came in and they came shallow and I put a little dibber on, went in and I caught like eight or nine carp in the last half hour, good fish as well. Um, so that's something I've got in my mind. I don't want to fish it on the bottom, I want to fish it shallow where I can see the fish, that'll be perfect. So that's the baits and, and the, the free spots. Um, hopefully I'll catch loads of fish shallow. So let's have a look at the rigs because it's a little bit different for me. Um, the paste rig, I always like to use an F1 pellet, a 4 before 14 F1 pellet. However, this lake is quite unusual in that it is rammed, and I mean rammed of fish, like more rammed than I've ever seen before. And I just, I'm, I'm conscious that I was getting so many indications and missing bites, I just wasn't giving myself enough time on the bite to hit it. And I've spoke about this before when I'm fishing that micro paste. It's almost like fishing worms for perch on a river. You know, where you, you let the float go under and you let it go, 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 develop and then strike. You don't strike at the dinks. So what I wanted to do was get a float that give me a longer bristle, but a fine bristle. And I was rooting around in the office the other day, the uh, Press Innovations office, and uh, I found this little beauty. Now, I don't even know if we do them anymore, but it's a, it's a sea drone pattern, which is our like Carpa Drone brand. I think it's, it might even be you know, it's just one of them brands that's Europe only, but I found this float in the in the thing, and it's a Sea Drome 7. And if you look, it's got one of those multicolored bristles, a really long multicolored bristle that's long and thin. It's the glass all the way through the float. So it's a slim float, like a pencil float, with that glass up above, and I just think that's going to be perfect because it's a thin bristle, which is what you want. It's going to register that pea paste perfectly. I've got a little bulk six inches from the hook and I think that float's going to be absolutely bang on for it. I've got 11 Jura slip and I just think that float's going to give me a little bit more time on the bite and that's what is important. It's not about going in and just clattering them. You've got to be efficient when you're doing this method. You've got to go in, read the bite, come back with a fish on. Might be a nice little improvement on what I've been doing with the F1 pellets just for this lake specifically because there's so many fish, you get so many indications. Edge rigs, I've got two of them. I love this, being able to set all my top kits up before the match. Now the reason I've got two is because I want to, just in case I have to try different depths. Now, in the past, I've caught in really shallow water, sort of 15, 16 inches, which is what this one's set at. But I've also got one there at two foot, just in case they're a little bit further out. I've got two there, both with three inch hook lengths, both bulk down. They've got 16 GPMs on both. 012 again and then they've got 4x14 f1 maggots that i've i doctor them slightly as always i chop the stem down so i take about an inch off the stem and then i chop the bristle down and then fatten it up with paint so what i end up with is like a, uh, a 1.8 mil bristle kind of thing and a nice short stem so i've got two of them rigged up importantly i, I will shorten this on the day but i like to fish it probably two inches of line above the float so important when you're fishing in the edge. If you can do it, if rules allow, which to do it, Shearsby, you can be right on top of your float, catching loads of fish. So shallow rig bonanza. Now, like, I've got quite a few shallow rigs set up. As we all know, it's F1s now, we've all learned that they always like to feed at a certain depth in the water column. Now, on this lake, they come really high, and because I'm feeding slot, they come really high. Now, the rule is that Shearsby, you can fish six inches below the float. 
Um, so I've, again, I've got rigs from six inches to about 15 inches because any deeper than that, and it just doesn't seem right at this venue, the fish and the better quality fish are really high. So I've got a few rigs to exploit that. Let's just start with the dibbers. I've got, I have two dibbers set up, which are just our inline dibbers. And I just have one that's about eight inches deep. So a little dibber there, one at about eight inches deep with a little tiny lash so that the fish hook themselves. And then I've got another one that's probably a foot deep, 12 inches deep. Both of them got lassoes on, so two rigs like that. But the rigs that I expect to do the damage and that have done the damage for me over and over again are little tiny jiggers. Now, I've set these up at 12 inches and 15 inches, so really shallow, and I will not be afraid to pull one of them down to eight inches. I don't have a stop up high because I don't need to at shears, but that's not the rules. So essentially what I'm doing here, you're not allowed to have a shot, but essentially what I'm doing is getting around the rules by using a jigger. It won't sink, I'm not over shot, it's only got three number 10s on it. But what happens is the jigger comes up to the loop and essentially I'm tapping and I've got a self hooking rig on. I'm not interested in jigging it up and down or anything like that. I'm literally trying to get it down to the depth with minimal resistance and then tap my pole. And having two jiggers at different depths up high allows me to do that. I've got these rigs on standby. Now, we all know how good short kits are, um, but when I show you these short kits, they're on another level. And these, my friends, are the number twos off my superior poles. Now, the superior poles have got like a bush in the number two. So you can actually elastic, you know, obviously it keeps your elastic running smooth, but some years ago, I was fishing quite a lot of pace shallow and, and like Benny's at Lindome and stuff. And I was realizing that with, even with kits like this, the normal short kits, when you want to land fish without breaking down, that's got too much elastic and you end up like, like this. So I wanted less elastic. I still wanted to use a soft elastic, but I wanted something that I could actually bottom out and, and lift the fish up at the netting. So I started using these little, I can't, they're like snooker cues. And it's just like, say, it's a number two off your pole. Adam Richards uses them up at the Oaks and places like that and just takes it apart. And trust me, once I get them going and I start catching them with these top kits, I just don't see how anyone's gonna compete really because unless they've got these, they ain't gonna beat me because I, don't, I never have to break down. I never have to use the puller. I never have to play the fish like this. I've just got the right amount of elastic in the pole. It's still 11 Jura slip. I lift into the fish, come back nice and smooth, and in one motion, lift it up and get in. I've got one with a little tiny jigger on, and now I've got two with slightly bigger jiggers, just the Preston ones. Um, and that's, if it gets chaos in the swim, there's loads of fish, I need a little bit more stability, and these jiggers are slightly bigger, take a little bit more weight down the line, and let me do that. There's also the opportunity to fish paste shallow on this venue. Um, it's something in practice that I've absolutely took the place apart with but in matches it hasn't it wasn't actually as good last time you still caught fish on it but it wasn't as good as actual pellets so these will also double up as pace shallow rigs should that chance arise just little tiny jiggers um, set probably 10 inches deep this is the beauty of having this top kit case these might not even come out of the bag but they're there they're ready I've got all these different top kits which just allow me to read the swim as the day goes on I've got me different baits to consider I've got me different um, swims that need different approaches and in this day and age when you've got these kit cases and stuff to take your top kits already set up providing you've got the kits why not put rigs on them just in case you know you see the top anglers now with 20 top kits i'm not saying do that i'm saying give yourself a nice little selection you do need a few shallow rigs you do need a couple of edge rigs you do need your deep water rig get them on the top kits before and then it takes you two minutes to set up when you get there. You know, you've got them there, they're ready, they're ready to go. Brilliant, brilliant way of fishing efficiently. So that's it. So we're gonna get on the bank now. Hopefully we draw a good peg tomorrow. We'll get the GoPro set up so you can see the actual footage of the match. And then on Monday, we'll, we'll get back here. We'll chat about how the match went, how we did, how we could have improved. And then it's blowing away again. And then see how we did in the match. So we'll see, hopefully we'll get a good peg tomorrow. And hopefully we can uh, do some winning. Okay. So it's the morning of the match, and we've drawn just down here, this little corner here, peg 59 on Willow. Um, as you see, the water level's down a bit, as is the case everywhere this summer. Um, and this is the same peg I drew last time. Wind's blowing up here. It looks fantastic, to be honest. I think I'll catch loads of fish today. So let's get the kit out. We'll go get set up. We'll have a look at the peg. 
and we'll get on with the fishing. But that's the bit I like. Right, we're all set up. We're almost ready to go now. It's about ten minutes left. Got my nets hair drying. They're um, lovely pegs. And uh, yeah, it looks all right. I think we'll be all right here today. Wind's sort of blowing down, as you can see. Hacking down the lake, right into this corner. And it's the same peg I uh, won from last time out. So, you see, simple stuff. Got my feed pellets, my slop, a bit of paste, a few hard pellets. I've got some meat in the, in the bag. If I use it, great. The water level, as you can see there, so far down it must be two foot lower than when i was here last um which means that the paste spot is only two foot deep on the top kit and one and uh you see the rigs there yeah the paste swims only two foot deep and the edges is 12 inch and 18 inch so <clears throat> lovely shallow water and i'm going to fish paste sort of as you can see i've got four sections try and I normally try and hold that joint and have that section behind me so I can push my pole out over any wandering balls that I might throw in which I when you're as crap at throwing as I am you do get the odd wandering ball so yeah so it looks really good lovely sunny day that's the match behind me not us um, I don't think it's going to be a record breaking day I've got to be honest I'm just not feeling it that kind of day but this ripple does look like it's very good so we'll get get a brew pod get the nets in when the shout time and then crack on with a match
Yes, it's a good start. Boys and girls. Normally my first hours are pretty pretty poor. <coughs> Trying to back off from it. So we'll come back short. See what we can catch here and then leave it to build again. I definitely didn't get that timing right there. little calf on this as well, which is quite nice to see. Rather than F1. It's 
spoke about that rig, that long bristle. See it? Just gives me a little bit longer on the bike before I strike. It's definitely working. in the edge because a few fish in the edge at the minute. Very lucky. Very lucky. That's what we got him. In the mouth. Good fish then. Two expands on, a little trick I do mm -hmm. when fishing like this. Two expands is often really good. A bit of a tiny bit.
given that half an hour break now, aren't they? So we'll go shallow and see what happens. But even though we're fishing for a lot of fish, we've still got to make time for a brook. That's the game. And then we'll come back in a bit. Okay, so we've had a bit of a change. This should have been really clear. And, um, hard to catch, so I've gone pace shallow, which can work really well, and it is doing it inside. So just keep switching between this and pan it, but this is working now. The only advantage, disadvantage is you can't slap or if you miss a bite you can't come back but sometimes it can be really effective. Today it might be that day.
see what I'm doing there, I'm just putting some haze. And it's just to try and get fish up really high. That's gonna be my plan. So I've got because I'm fishing pace now, I've got two different slots. I've got one that I can throw and I've got one that I pot. The potting one's really wet to bring the fish really high, because that's the best place to catch them with paste. And I've got a throwing one that's a little bit stiffer. It just lingers in the water a bit longer. I'm catching this deep. This is eight inches. This one. Yeah, I better fish like that. like the wet stuff at the minute. So that it's most of my bait at the minute is going into like really runny like porridge. I'm just potting it in. And it's working a tree. Little tree. Up to 95 fish now with three and a half hours to go. So it's gone quite well. Look, but he isn't right on the top of it.
Alright, oh, welcome back. We're time is it? Quarter past three, still three hours to go and I've got 124 fish, so. on the pace shall we now and it's just solid as you can see I can just go in and catch the fish and we go in now picture of sizes that's a small one really then I've had some real good F1s as well and it looks like the carp are gonna come in down the edge so hopefully catch a few of them later on as well up that end, sat in the water so they can get a bit lower because that's how you know, low the level of the lake is so I'm to have to lean over every time, that's a bit, giving me a bad pet. Maybe expect me to just go like really fast, but to be honest, that can work against you. you know, we've got a top kit on that allows me to net the fish without breaking down. It's quite, so it's quite stiff elastic, and if I was to rush, I'd just pull out a fish. So I just like to be nice and steady. I've got to do this for five hours then, so yeah. I'd rather just keep consistent, nice and steady. Keep coming back with a fish on. Right, it's going really well. We've got over 150 fish. And um just want a bit of a reset. Cup of tea. Five minutes just to get some sorted again. Just topped up the ground bait. Um got that ready. Just to put a bit more haze in it.
Okay, so that was it. That was the match. That was all the action as it unfolded. We actually ran out winner on the day with £225, which was a great day's fishing. I had over nearly 240 fish, so 238 I had. Unfortunately, it was just £7 short of my late record, which was a bit annoying because I thought all day long, I thought I'm definitely breaking this today. But a few little laps in concentration and a couple of rigs that I lost probably cost me that. But never mind, it was still a great day's fishing. I just want to run you through like the actual rigs that worked. Obviously, we, we went through them before the match. You saw me saw them in action, but there was uh, three key rigs, I think, that probably worked best and how we actually fished them. So we started the match on pace short. Now, made a bit of a mistake here. I know I should know this better than this by now, but that shallow line with a slop takes a good hour, hour and a half to really, really ramp up. And after 30 minutes, I've caught, I'm catching really well on pace short, but after 30 minutes, there's an odd swirl and I'm just itching to get on it. And in hindsight, I should just know better, set myself a little timer on my phone or a stopwatch or something for an hour, hour and 10, and just leave it and just fish elsewhere because the longer you can leave it, obviously the better it gets. The fish get more and more confident. So that was a bit of a mistake on my part. I, I was too giddy to get on them. But however, this pace short was really effective and all I used was a, just an F1 kit with a short number three on it, right in front of my nets and just fed four mil pellets. It was really good. Now, I thought pre-match that it would be about four foot there, but it actually turned out to be two foot. That's all, which was surprising. The water level's really down. However, the sea drone float with a long bristle, it almost looks like one of those ones that you see on the Chinese um, when they're pace fishing, big long coloured bristle. It actually worked really well because it just allowed me to just wait and delay my strike. I could just watch it, watch it, watch it. And when I was absolutely confident there was a fish on, then I struck and it worked really well. It actually took quite a lot of shot, a lot more than I thought. It says 0.3, but there's no way it's 0.3. It took loads of number nines on the bottom and the hook and everything was perfect. I think my feeding was good on that, just loose fed four mils, every sort of third fish, and it was dead nice to be fair. But I, I reckon I could have caught on that all day. I would have caught 200 fish on that, no problem. I mean, I caught 50 on it in the first hour, so that was a, a really successful tactic. They were a bit smaller than shallow, which is always the case on there. You, you know, if you fish on the bottom, there tend to be smaller fish, but it worked well, and it, it was a great, great way to kick off my match. Now, moving on to the shallow. Now, I started off on pellets, um, like throwing slop in and fishing pellets in the in the lasso, which was great. You get loads of bites on that. But as the day goes on, the fish come higher and higher for that slop. And, and you, there's a rule at Shears, but you've got to fish six inches under the float. Um, so obviously we've got to abide by them rules. And when they're that shallow, six inches, they just when you're feeding slop, they just seem to miss the pellet too easy. And I don't, it's not that they're ignoring it or anything. They just don't see it. I, I'm I'm convinced of it. So the pace scores really well. And this is the little rig that I ended up using. So we've got a little jigger, one of the four to six mil ones. I'll talk about the little stubby top kit in a moment, but we've got the little four to six mil one, which supports the pace nicely. And as you can see, the rig's total length is only about eight or nine inches, but I don't have a stop above it, which is really important. That means that when my pace goes in, float goes up to the tip. You don't have to, there's no minimum lash length limit at Shears B. I can just have it right up against the thing, when it obviously falls down through the water, goes up against my tip, tap the pole tip, and they just hook themselves. Now I've got a size 12 GPM on there, which is massive for them size fish, but it just works with the pace. They don't, they don't see it, they just engulf it. So yeah, that's the rig. Obviously the size 12 hook means like fish loss is so kept to a minimum. Like when you're using those 16 hooks, you do ping out an odd one because you hook them around the mouth and that, but for whatever reason with the pace, they just engulf it and every bite just sees the elastic coming out. And once you get it going, basically what I do, I have a, a, a bowl of slop it's a bit stiffer so I can throw it in and have a little bowl with it really really wet and that's what goes in the pot so basically I'm putting my little tiny sort of pea sized piece of paste on put it in the pot cover the pot with that real sloppy stuff go in sort of splash it about on the surface and nine times out of ten before you even get the pot out of the water the fish is on and it works so well in the day um, and when you're catching like this this short super short it's like i say it's a number two section of my pole the preston top kits come with these bushes already in the number twos for you to keep your elastic in the center when you've got a two-piece top kit but for this it works out perfect because you've got a little ptfe bush in there i'm not saying there'll be all and end all but when you pace fishing you don't want to be breaking down all the time because it just makes the whole process a little bit slower so having this means that i can just ship back nice and smooth a meter or so of elastic comes out nicely pan the fish in the net rebate get the slop in the pot and go back out and just keep repeating the process it just makes you really efficient 
So that's the rig, that's how short it is. Like I say, the rule is six inch at shears beat. If, it was, if there was no rule, I would, I would have that even shorter. I mean, that total rig length is probably, like I say, eight or nine inches. But basically what's happening is the float goes straight to the top and you fish in the correct depth where the fish are. Now the only other sort of fishing we did was a bit of meat in the edge. Now this went really well. It was way better than I expected. And basically I started off with a, a normal sort of edge float with a bulk, dragging it in, and it just, it just wasn't right. So I went off my box and I got a little dibber out, put the shot pretty much underneath my float, set it six inches deep, throwing meat into the grass, dragging it right up against the reeds, and the, the carp were just coming up and almost like slurping it off the grass. So it worked really well, that did. I just used a little inline dibber, as you can see, nice little short line so that they hook themselves. And the, it was the elastic that actually caught me out a little bit really, because I actually, I think I caught 59 pound in the last 40 minutes, because I put a different, another net in, um, and they're like three to five pound, not two to five pound carp. And it caught me off guard. I thought 13 Jura slip would be perfect. And I, I even upped, and I got off my box and I upped it to 15. But to be honest, 17 would have been better or less 15. If I used a short kit maybe with 15 in, it would have been even better. They weren't fighting very hard. It was like wallop, guide them out, net them. But this sometimes, an odd one like teared off. So that's just a small improvement I probably could have made on that could have probably beefed everything up a bit, but it caught me off guard. I didn't expect it to be that good in the edge. So yeah, lovely, lovely days fishing. All of my free tactics worked really nicely, um, but small tweaks could be made definitely for next time, which I'm, I'm convinced 250, 260s on the cards, if I get it absolutely dead right. It wasn't far off this week, but a few little tweaks. Like I had a rig come off twice, actually. That The rigs have been on my top kits for weeks and weeks, and they've obviously they've, they've rotted and they've caught loads of fish on them. So. Should have been a bit better with that, a bit more diligent. Tied some fresh ones up, but that's just me being lazy. Um, so that cost me a few fish, but not many. And then obviously tweaks to my setup would have probably caught me another 20 pound, I think. So yeah, lovely days fishing. And if you like this sort of content, just let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again on the next one.